Welcome back to Verse. Today we're super lucky because we have Jeff Cortnell, a huge star in NHL hockey. Mr. Cortnell has scored 367 goals for his teams, and in 1988, he won the Stanley Cup. Thank you for coming on Verse. Thank you for having me. So Jeff, what's it like winning the Stanley Cup with the Edmonton Oilers? Well, you know what, it's something that every Canadian boy who plays street hockey growing up dreams of, fantasizes about, and you know, always talked about scoring the winning goal in the Stanley Cup. So to win it is a huge thrill. Can I see your ring? Sure. If I can get it off. <laughs> How do you get one of these rings? Well, you play uh, four tough rounds of playoff hockey, and you got to win them all. And uh, the winners who win the Stanley Cup, every guy on the team and the trainers and the coaches all get a ring. That's really cool. You come from a really sporty family with you, your brother, and your son, all in NHL. Growing up, was hockey enjoyable for you, and was it your ultimate goal? It wasn't my ultimate goal. I don't think I really realized till I was 17 or 18 years old that I might have a chance to make it. Uh, I just wanted to always have fun playing, and that was the most important part. Well, what does it take to become a professional? Can you tell us more about what you had to do every day to achieve your goal? Once you decide that that's your goal and you're going to try to achieve it, dedication in every aspect of life is probably the most important. I think that you have to sacrifice a lot, you have to train a lot, you know, you have to practice all your skills uh, from skating to shooting to getting stronger, every little thing and there's so many people to compete against to get into the NHL alone and then it's hard every year to stay there. was your biggest influence in hockey? I would have to say my dad was my biggest influence. I think uh, one thing that he really stressed when we were young is that we played a lot of sports. I played soccer, baseball, hockey, and um, I think overall he pushed us to you know, succeed and, and compete in everything that we did. It must have been interesting playing hockey with your brother and also competing against him, especially at the higher levels. What memories do you have of playing on the ice together? We didn't get along when we were younger, but I think once we both got to the NHL, uh, we you know, enjoyed competing against each other, but also uh, enjoyed a lot playing together in Vancouver. Were you guys competitive? Yeah, we were very competitive, and I think that's also what made us as good as we became, is that we competed against each other, uh, we competed with each other. Um, you know, I can remember going to Calgary for Christmas one year as a family, and Russ and I played on the same team on an outdoor rink and we were playing against kids that were probably three or four years older than us and we beat them so that was pretty exciting for us back then. That's really cool. Well hockey obviously runs in the family. When we're talking about reaching goals, how much do you think is talent that you're born with and how much do you think is hard work? You know there's a lot of aspects of uh, sports. I think the uh, physical Act, active uh, ability of it, I think that's a big part of it, but also I think mental is probably more than anyone can imagine. If you are positive and you believe you can do it, like anything, and if you think you're going to do it, you can do it. You've had a lot of concussions playing hockey, and those can be really dangerous. What do you want people to know about concussions? You have to protect your brain because Post-concussion syndrome is something that you can, it's very difficult to live with. Um, I think that, you know, I suffered through it a lot from having too many concussions and having to retire. The biggest message I can give is if you're young and you get a concussion, you really need to take time off and make sure that all the symptoms are gone. So what is post-concussion syndrome? Post-concussion syndrome is basically a dizzy feeling that makes you feel like you have headaches and you're car sick a lot. Your dad passed away when you were a teenager, and in a video you said, when you open up to your story, it brings out other people's stories. What advice do you have for teens going through something terrible like that? We all live through tragedies. We all live through mistakes. I think that uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to hide from. Uh, reach out for help. I think that probably 
as a family, when we were young, when, when my situation with my dad happened, I think we were ashamed of it. And that's because back then, not a lot of people talked about it. And I think that, you know, forever, if people ask me, uh, are your parents alive? Or do your parents live in Victoria? I would just say, no, my dad's dead. And it wasn't until New York, when I did an article that I said my dad committed suicide, that a lot of the stories, a lot of the compassion, a lot of the great things we've been able to do for mental health uh, started to come up. Well, you and your family have raised millions of dollars. Like you said, you've built a center for them. Can you tell me about it? Something that we're very proud of, it's the Archie Courtnell Center at the Royal Jubilee Hospital and the Emergency Ward. And, you know, we've been blessed to have the, you know, the careers that we've had in hockey and meet the people that we've met and become friends with. And our friends have come from all over North America to support us here in Victoria. And we raise money uh, for emergency care for somebody who is suicidal. So if someone comes into emergency to check in and they say they're suicidal, they'll take them right to the Archie Courtnell Center where in the past they would have to sit and wait. And a lot of people, patients would leave and Basically, what they try to do is they try to diagnose the problems with the patients over a 12-hour period, calm them down, and it's really made a big impact for our community. I think when we first opened um, in 2005, we saw roughly 150 patients a month, and now we see 650 patients a month. Wow. So, Jeff, I'd like to learn something from you, too. Is there something you could coach me on? Sure. What do you want to learn? Something to do with hockey? If you catch a pass, you want to have to sit here and just cushion the puck, okay? And then when you pass it, you want to follow through with the target. Okay, ready? So don't let it hit hard like that. When it hits, push it in so it's soft. Okay. Good. There, perfect. Nice. Answer. So the whole key is basically practicing your wrist shot. So you just reach back like this. You reach back there. Yeah. Shoot it. Nice. Looking where you're gonna shoot, you obviously want to hit the corners, low corners, top corners. That was good. You gotta reach back. You want to reach back here with your hand and then fall. What your sister score? You missed. Oh, one more. Let's see if she can win. Oh, she had an empty net, dude. Jeff, the combination of you being a sports star and helping so many people is amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Jeff Cortnell has worked hard for his goals on and off the ice. So just remember, there's a whole universe of opportunities out there, and you can reach your goals too. Thank you for watching Verse.